Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim uh, I think uh, we, we, we discussed uh, some of the components of the barrage. And also we discussed what is the difference between headworks and barrage and a veer and a barrage. All right, and a veer and a hump. These all things uh, we discussed in the previous lecture. And perhaps we already discussed the divide wall. And uh, today we want to start from the fish ladder. <coughs> so actually, what is fish ladder? Fish ladder is a passage. Uh, it is built along the divide wall towards the main base portion. And uh, the main purpose of providing this fish ladder as you know, once if we construct a barrage, then we basically construct a barrier. And when all gates are closed, then the aquatic life, fishes, etc. and other aquatic life, they cannot move across. And uh, we have kept, we must have to keep passage to maintain the ecology of the river system. And uh, so this type of the structure is provided and uh, it is called as fish ladder. The velocities inside the fish ladder, velocity of flows, they are kept from six to eight feet per second. And uh, this is the picture of the uh, fish ladder. And uh, here this is the plan and the section of the fish ladder. So in the plan, you can see that these are baffle valves. And uh, the water moves from like this, from the upstream to downstream. And this is the section. And uh, these are the baffle walls. And this is the bed having certain slope. And this is the water surface profile, how the water moves. And you know, due to this velocity is a very high velocity, six to eight feet per second. And there is a lot of turbulence also here, <coughs> which the fishes they like. <coughs> Do you know what is the favorable direction of the fishes to move? What is the favorable direction of movement of the fishes? Yes. Yes. Against the, the direction of flow. J. Sir, against the direction of flow. Yes. The fishes they like to move against the current of water, against the direction of flow. It means they want to move from the downstream to upstream. OK. And uh, <clears throat> this is all this is true for all, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, energetic uh, aquatic life. They want to move against the direction of current of water. But what about the dead fishes? In which direction they have to move? So direction of flow. In the direction of flow. Yes, in which direction the water will take them. OK, so that is the difference between dead and life. So the life people, they, they, they have their own standings. Wo hakbaat kehte hai na? Wo jo dead hote hai, wo they move with the flow. So anyway, uh, this passage is provided as the aquatic life. It can negotiate uh, from the downstream to upstream and vice versa. And this is necessary uh, for the growth of the aquatic life. That's why we provide this fish ladder. And uh, you know what I would suggest to you that you must, uh, you know, unfortunately nowadays we cannot physically visit any barrage, which is, you know, is a compulsory part of the part two. And we have to go there 
and uh, visit uh, some barrage, but you know, due to this COVID. So what we can do, we can visit it online. How we can visit online, these barrages? For example, Balloki had works. Huh? Tonsa barrage, uh, Gotri barrage, Sakhar barrage. No, not you too. We can go, we can see the Google Earth and we can reach <coughs> to these locata locations with the Google Earth. And there you should observe where these fish ladders are provided and go to each barrage and see that all components of the barrage, where those are available. Where are the main base? Where are the industry space? Where is the divide wall? Is one divide wall or two divide walls? OK, where are the fish ladders? And similarly, where are the guide banks of the barrage? Where are the marginal bonds? ETC, so all, so you can, you must uh, visit uh, these maybe two, three, four barrages of Pakistan uh, on Google Earth. All right. Now this is one more uh, pictorial view of the fish ladder. So this one is the upstream side. The water is flowing like that, and these are the normal bays. <clears throat> and uh, this is a fish ladder which is enlarged. And uh, the fish ladder having the slopes. So this one is the what is this called? Uh, you know, this uh, figure is very similar to dog legged staircase. Have you seen dog legged staircase? Do you have an idea? You know, there is one landing, uh, sorry, uh, one flight. Then what is this one? What we call it? In case of dog legged staircase. Handy? This is landing. And this is next flight. It's like that. Have you studied dog led staircase? I think you, yes, might, you must have drawn the plan and section of the dog led staircase. So this is like that. So this is the downstream side. So the fishes, they move here because they feel more turbulence here. <coughs> And the fishes, then they move in this direction and then in this direction and then they reach upstream. So in that way, so they can cross this barrier which the human beings they have provided. OK, so that is the main function of the fish ladder. Now the next component of the barrage are the guide banks. Now here you can see uh, this is the layout plan of a barrage. So this is upstream side. The flow of water is taking place in this direction. So here are the bridge piers and what is inside bridge piers? What is inside? There would be weirs. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. And uh, some would be the main weirs or main base and rest of the that would be under sluice base. As here no divide wall is shown, so we cannot say which one are the under sluice base. And uh, these are the guide banks. So this is also guide bank. If the, this is the direction of flow, this is the right guide bank. And this is the left guide bank. <coughs> so what are guide bank? What are their? What is their cross section? So guide banks basically are the earthen embankments of which shape of trapezoidal cross section. Embankments they have usually uh, uh, trapezoidal cross section, and uh, you know the slope facing to water is stone pitched. So stone pitching is provided on the sloping side, which is towards the water. So that is the guide banks. 
So there are two guide banks in a barrage, right and left guide banks. Actually, the guide bank is a river training work. Like marginal bond is also a river training work. And river training works, uh, you know, these similar river training works sometimes we also provide in other hydraulic structures like bridges, uh, which we built across the rivers. So you might have seen some embankments on the upstream side and on the downstream side of the bridges. But guide banks, anyway, these are it is the main component of the barrage. Now, what are the functions of these guide banks? To guide, you know, its name is guide banks. So its function is to guide the river to move towards the barrage. So the water, whatever uh, comes here, so it guides towards the barrage. Number two, to contain the river width. This would be the river width. When? When there are, there are normal days and even in flood days. In flood days, there is too much discharge, but the river width will remain the same because we have provided guide banks. So these are the two major functions of the guide banks. So its width remains fixed. And then here there is basically weirs we do provide. So that is the guide banks. Now come to the marginal bonds are the flood embankments. So marginal bonds are basically fl are flood embankments on the upstream side in continuation to guide banks. So these are the guide banks. This is the upstream side of the barrage. So these bunds are provided on the upstream side. Now these bunds are also made of earthen material. And this shape is cross section shape is trapezoidal like this. So this is the shape of the uh, you know, uh, marginal bunds are flood embankments. So the length, you know, how this length of the uh, marginal bunds depends on what? And this, the width between two marginal bunds, it depends on what? And the height of the marginal bunt, it depends on what? A flux rise in water or maximum height. Uh, yeah. Do you know the water surface profiles, which we studied uh, in hydraulic engineering subject? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, what would be the bad slope uh, of the river where we do provide a barrage? A mild. Mild. It is mild. So when we provide this weir or a barrage, then does it what we call damming action on upstream? Yes, sir. It will. Yeah, it will. Then which type of the surface profile will form on the M1. upstream? M1 surface profile. So there would be certain length of the M1 profile. So up to which? We should provide the length of these guide bank, uh, these marginal bonds. It should go up to how much distance? Up to the M1. Up to the M1 profile extends. And, and can you calculate yes, that, by the way? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very easily by using a step equation or yeah, by using dynamic equation or differential equation. So you, you can do that. Anna? So once we know yes, up to which the M1 profile extends, so we have to profile these marginal bonds up to that uh, uh, length. So it means we can compute how much should be the length of the marginal bonds. Now come to how much should be the width between the marginal bonds. How, how we can compute? You know, the width of the river is a function of the discharge. As the discharge increases, the width of the river increases. And in flood days, its width becomes too much. 
you know, this barrage is designed on a particular value of the flood, which we call as design flood. So whatever it will be the width of the river on the design flood, we have to keep the width or the gap between these two marginal bands. Could you follow it? Could you? How far, how far away Sir, these, uh, these two marginal bonds should be? Because we have computed the length. We say that M1 profile would be here. But how much should be this? It, its width should be? They should be a part equal to the width of the river on that design flood. So let's say the width of the river is from here to here. OK. So. Could you follow it now? And how much should be the height of the. Um, uh, these uh, marginal points. The height of the marginal one, you know, on the design flood, whatever should be the stage, we know that. And and the height should be from riverbed level to that stage plus the freeboard because we have to provide the freeboard. So we know that what would be the value of the stage here? What would be the level of water here on the design flood? So we have to leave certain freeboard and that would be the height of the marginal band. <laughs> so it means. The length. Uh, length of the river depends on the. On the. Length of the M1 profile. OK. The gap between the marginal bonds it depends on the width of the river on the design flat. And this height of the. Uh, marginal bonds they depends on. On the uh, stage. Uh, which occurs at the design flat. All right. So it means all dimensions we have to compute on the design flats. Now, what are the uh, OK? In case of marginal bonds, you know, stone pitching is not provided. On any side. Neither the side which is uh, not subjected to water are the side which is subjected to water. So we don't provide any stone pitching. That is the difference between the guide banks and marginal bonds. On guide banks, their slopes, they are stone pitched, which are facing to water. But here, these are just earthen embankments. What is the shape of the embankment? Cross-section shape kya hai? Trapezoidal. Trapezoidal. OK, now what are the functions of the marginal bonds to contain the river width at the design flood? You know, on design flood, the river width has increased so to contain whole water. And where it will bring? What is the next function to converge the river water? Now it is converging and diverted towards the guide banks. So that is if two major functions of the marginal Bonds. If we'll not provide this marginal bond, are this marginal bonds? What will happen during flood days? Water will spread up to here, and then it has to pass like this. So it will, it will, uh, you know, uh, flow from the outer side of the guide banks, and you know the outer side of the guide banks. They are not. The stone pitching is not provided over there, so this can easily scour and damage the barrage guide banks. So that's why we provide marginal bonds to contain the river flow within that and divert it towards the uh, main barrage. So that is the function of the marginal bonds. Marginal bonds are flood embankments. So how we can define marginal bonds? <clears throat> you know, these are the earthen embankments. 
which are provided on the upstream side of the barrage in continuation of guide banks. And uh, no stone pitching is provided. These are made of earthen uh, material and it has two functions to contain the river width, a design flood and number two to converge. They are converging the water and diverting it towards the barrage. So that is the function of the marginal parts. Shall we move uh, ahead? <coughs> and if you have any questions, you are welcome. Head regulator of main canal. You can see here on the left side, uh, this is the layout plan of a barrage. This is the upstream side. The river is flowing in this direction and here weirs are provided. These are the under sluice base. This is also under sluice base. This is divide wall. This is another divide wall. This is one fish ladder. On which side is it provided? Along the divide wall towards the main base side. And this is another fish ladder. So this is the divide wall and it is provided here. OK, this one is the silt pocket. And this is the head regulator of main canal. This is the head regulator of the main canal. So what is the regulator? Actually, regulator means a device, a structure which controls the flow of water. That is called as a regulator, like we say regulator, fan regulator. Huh? So these regulators constructed at the off taking points are called regulators. So this is off taking point of a canal. And this is the off taking point of main canal. So that's why this is called as head regulator of the main canal. If from main canal we are taking, we are off taking a branch canal, then here we have to provide a regulator and that is would that would call head regulator of the branch canal. OK, and if we are taking a distributary from the branch canal, then the regulator provided at the head of the distributary is called as. What what we call it? Head regulator of distributary. OK. This is distributary head regulator. So. That is the head regulator of the main canal, of the branch canal, of the distributary, of the miner. <laughs> now, what are their functions? They have the three important functions. The first function is they regulate the discharge towards the canal. Regulate means they control. So whenever they want to stop, they can stop. When they want to reduce, they can reduce. All right. So that means that is the first function. What is the second function? You know, these regulators, these head regulators, they control the entry of silt into the canal. How they control the entry of silt? That we will discuss just now. Now, what is the third? What is the third function of the head regulator of main canal or head regulator of any canal? That is, they can measure discharge. So they can, they can serve as a meter. So how much is the discharge taking place or passing through the head regulator of the main canal? Now, if I take a section here, so this is the section of the head regulator of the main canal. So this one is the river. And uh, here you can see these are the uh, silt excluders. Actually, these are the tunnels which we provide in the barrage and uh, this is the slab of, of the under of the tunnels and uh, you know the heavy sediment water passes through these tunnels and if you will see this is the crest of the head regulator of the main canal and then this is the downstream glasses and this is the downstream flow and again we have to provide these these sheet piles this is the upstream sheet pile, intermediate sheet pile, and downstream sheet pile. 
and here there are gates. So can you see here that the crest of the head regulator of main canal is kept on a higher location as you know, the sediments, you know, the sediment concentration is more on lower part of the flow and the upper upper part of the uh, water, it contains less sediments. So the purpose is as less sediment water should enter here. And you know, this is the uh, how the flow takes place. So which type of flow would be this? Subcritical or supercritical where my cursor is at right now? Supercritical. Yes, because the bed slope is too high. So that's why it is supercritical flow. And then here the bed slope is very less. So here there would be subcritical flow. And what should happen? When the supercritical flow changes into subcritical flow, hydraulic jump has to form. So this is the hydraulic jump which is forming here. So they, these, this is the head regulator of the main canal. Now, do you have any questions? <clears throat> Shall we move ahead? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, site selection for a branch. Mm, for example, if we are exploring a better site where a branch should be constructed, what are the major main points we must consider <clears throat> for it? Number one, site must have a good command over the area to be irrigated. What do you mean by good command? The difference of level. You know, one, after constructing the branch, we get a certain point level. And the area to be irrigated should be lower as the water we can supply by gravity flow. So that means command. Now, what is the next? Site must be closer to the command area. Could you follow it? What do you mean by that? Hmm? Suppose uh, it's the river moving like that. This is a river. And uh, this is the area which we want to irrigate. All right. So the site must be closer to the command area where I should provide uh, barrage. Here or here, which side would be better? This is side number one. This is the number two. So side number two. The side number, number two. It should be closer. What would be the benefit? The benefit will there would be less seepage, less evaporation losses, less seepage losses within the canal network. Okay. Number three, the width of the river at the site should preferably be minimum. Where the for example, here and here, where the width is lesser. So we have also to see that. Number three, uh, number four, site must have a well defined and stable river approach. The river approach, the river cross section should be stable over there. Number five, a good land approach to the site. I mean, if uh, this is the Birat site we are proposing, so there should be uh, some existing road network, maybe Kachar Pakka later on, we can make it metal road, but that means the approach. But sometimes it is not necessary that the road should go up to the, this is not possible that road will go exactly up to the site because the site may be at that time is a very, uh, you know, uh, remote area and the people, they are not living over there. The, what is the next? Number six, easy diversion of the river after construction. For example, if the river is coming like this, and maybe here there is a bend, then we can select this side for the barrage.
and uh, we will construct barrage in dry conditions and when the debarrage is completed then we connect when we divert water uh, instead of moving from here towards the barrage so it is talking about easy diversion of the river after construction number 7 existence of central approach to the barrage after diversion this is essentially required for silt control uh, we should try that the here the river should move straight uh, number 8 the barrage site should be situated either in the number 1 sub mountainous or boulder stage and number 2 trough or alluvial stage of the river you know in case of the rivers there are four stages first stage is mountainous stage it has very high slopes of the river the second stage is sub mountainous stage or boulder stage the third stage is trough or alluvial stage and the fourth stage is deltic stage so out of these four uh, the barrage sites are suitable for sub mountainous and trough or alluvial stage like in case of indus river what is our first barrage what is the name of our first barrage is it jena barrage Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is one more barrage. That is the Ghazi barrage. So the power के लिए. But we we take canals. You know, okay, power channel आ रहा है ना? Yes, sir. तो barrage ही बना के निकाला है ना? Definitely. So the you know the first barrage on Indus is basically. गाजी बराज देन जना तो वो कौन सी स्टेज में देज आर इन सब माउंटेनियस और बोल्डर स्टेज व्हाट अबाउट द सखर बराज एंड कोटरी बराज कोटरी इज द लास्ट बराज एंड देयर इज एन ट्रफ फॉर अलूवियल स्टेज है ना नंबर 9 द रिवर रीच शुड बी स्ट्रेट सो दैट वेलोसिटी शुड बी यूनिफॉर्म ओवर द क्रॉस सेक्शन सो दीस आर द मेन 10 पॉइंट्स व्हिच वी शुड कंसीडर Why selecting a site for a barrage? Now uh, we want to discuss some uh, basic uh, things about the layout of a barrage, and uh, you can see in this uh, figure, this one. Uh, what are these, by the way? What are these? These two thick, thick lines like hockey. Huh? What are these? these are the guide banks if the direction of flow is this then this is the right guide bank this is the left guide bank okay now we want to study what is the khader what is the khader of a river kyun ji no idea sir Khader means uh, the flood plain of a river. You know, a river in flood days it expands up to certain limits. Those limits are called as khader width of the khader of the uh, river, and this width is called as khader width of the river. For example, if uh, in in this river the water goes up to these and during the floods these are the limits up to which the water goes so from here to here this is called as khader khader width of the river okay and you know this khader width of the river uh may be 15 to 20 times more as the width of the river because in flood days it goes in normal days whatever is the width of the river may be 15 to 20 times more and you know sometime river meanders like this 
and then the 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 whatever is the width of the river is 15 to 20 times more maybe the khadir width what is the khadir axis so it is an imaginary line passing through the center of the banks high banks two high banks you know this is one high bank of the river it is the another high bank of the river and uh, if i draw the center line like this so that is the khadir axis okay and uh, what is the barrage axis barrage axis is a straight line along which the crest of the barrage is laid for example this line if we are providing here the weirs main base and understuse base and this is the center line of the weir crests then this axis is called as barrage axis now then after barrage what is the headwork axis headwork axis is the line perpendicular to the barrage axis okay so this one is the barrage axis b a and on 90 degree of this sorry this one i am sorry not this one up to here so this axis is head work axis this is the head work axis and uh, one one thing is left what is the river axis river axis basically is a line parallel to the khadir axis but at the center of the barrage if this is the center point and then this line is called as the river axis this one okay so i think now you could uh, understood the basics of the river of the barrage layout and several axes are lines do you have any question uh, excuse me sir excuse me sir yes uh, sir aisi jagah pe phir hamari width kya hogi uh, uski marginal bunds ki the width of the marginal bunds as we already discussed that uh you know we don't uh, design a barrage on maybe 5000 year return period flood so what we are expecting that flood that it has to repeat maybe after 5000 years roughly okay so we design a barrage on a smaller return period maybe 100 year return period so whatever would be the width of the river on 100 year return period flood so we will provide over marginal bonds that much at that much uh, a part okay so do you get All it right, sir. yes sir <clears throat> so we we have not to make uh, <clears throat> you know any hydraulic structure safe to all type of floods that that would be very expensive so we don't uh, provide that so there is a compromise has been made between the life of the structure and uh, you know the the its importance and then we decide the return period on which it should be designed now the guideline given by iri lahore for siting a barrage so they have carried out research iri means irrigation research institute of punjab irrigation department so these are the findings uh, of the iri now they say them where angle between the head work axis and the river axis exceeds 10 degrees now you see uh, this one is the head work axis what is uh, head work axis the line perpendicular to the this barrage axis <coughs> okay and uh, if this angle which is 
if this angle is greater than 10 degrees, then III says that there are problems. What problems that we want to discuss just now? So when this, the, you know, the angle between headwork exit and river exit exceeds 10 degrees, the problem of concentration of flow on one side and island formation within the guide banks arises. So what is the ideal condition? What should be the relationship between headwork access and river access? Koji, those should be, how much should be the angle, angle between them? Ideally, the zero degree or the change. Yes, it should be zero degree. So the headwork access and the river access both should be. What is the difference between river access and Khader access? You know, Khader access is the central line of the extreme uh, boundary of the river in flood days. And river access is parallel to the Khader access, but it joins the center of the barrage. OK. <clears throat> now, what are the examples of uh, these problems where the angle the angle uh, between the headwork exit and river access, they were more than 10 degrees like Islam barrage, Sidnai barrage and Balloki barrage or Balloki headworks. OK. Now, the what is the second uh, findings? They say that if the river access is to the right of the headwork access, the concentration of flow is generally on the left side. All right, so it depends. So if the river access is on right side, concentration of flow would be on left side and vice versa. And tendency to form islands is on the right side. On which side the river access would be? The islands will form on that side. Number three. When the barrage is located below the confluence of two rivers, confluence means where the two rivers are meeting, it should be located sufficiently far below confluence. For example, where is some space? For example, this is one river and this is the another tributary. And what is this point? You point some point at. This is the confluence point of the two rivers. So don't provide barrage here immediately below it. Provide sufficiently below it. So the section two is better for providing a barrage. <coughs> Number four. The barrage should be located as far as possible in the center of the floodplain. This is the flood plane, so we should provide in the center. A symmetry of location increases the likelihood of shoals forming. Shoal means islands, bars, huh? and requires expensive training works. Protective measures, we require expensive protective measures. Could you follow this? Yes, sir. Example, for example, uh, this is a river cross section. I am just uh, like this. So I think this is the center. Huh? So barrage should be provided here. OK. We should provide barrage in the central part. We should not provide barrage from here to here not on one side, but we should provide in the middle portion. Could you now follow, I think? Huh? OK. If we will provide like this on one side, then there would be uh, shoal formation. There would be islands will develop here. What is the number five? The most suitable site for barrage when constructed on dry land is below the outer side of the bend 
which is followed by a straight river reach as we have seen here you know in this diagram so with that we have finished this chapter so if you have any questions you are welcome otherwise we would like to take 10 minute rest and then we will continue do you have any questions so in this chapter we discuss about the basics of the barrage what are the main components of the barrage what are their functions okay what is a barrage etc so just the basics of the barrage we have tried to learn any questions so can you please repeat the difference between canal head regulator and distributary head regulator yes okay i would select a pen huh this is a pen the name of uh, this regulator is main canal head regulator we always say head regulator because head regulator means it is provided on the head of a canal okay so this is the main canal that's why this is canal this is called as head regulator of main canal now i am off taking this one what is this one what canal it should be distribution ni chahiye canal this usually is it is branch canal this is the main canal then it is branch branch canal now a regulator provided on the head of the branch canal this is called as head regulator of branch canal ya branch canal head regulator ha huh? ya head regulator of instead of main canal we have to say branch canal now this is sorry i do not have space on this side what i will do maybe this canal is a distributary canal and this is the head of the distributary and we have to provide a regulator here to take water from this branch canal into distributary canal so what is the name of this regulator this is also head regulator but this is the head regulator of distributary canal okay and right, then sir. from here we will take minor hai na और ये एक इसको हम यहाँ पे क्या देंगे वी विल प्रोवाइड ए रेगुलेटर एंड दैट वुड कॉल्ड एज हेड रेगुलेटर ऑफ माइनर इज इट क्लियर एनी अदर क्वेश्चन एनी अदर क्वेश्चन तो शेल वी स्टॉप एंड टेक how much 10 minute rest so now it is 8:56 so we will be back inshallah on 9 6 you kar le theek hai yes sir theek ho gaya
Okay, ji, are you back? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Now we would like uh, to start <coughs> our next chapter, and uh, the name given by me is the chapter two B. Our previous chapter was introduction of the branch, and that was chapter two A. And now this is chapter two B because we are discussing the about branch, but uh, in a different way. This the name of this chapter <coughs> is surface flow considerations in barrage design. Uh, we know very well that barrages are provided over alluvial foundations. I think you have an idea. Barrages are pro provided on alluvial beds. These are they do not. These are not provided over the rocks. Are rocky foundations. As barrages are provided on the alluvial beds, so a barrage structure must be safe for the surface flow conditions as well as subsurface flow conditions. So water seeps in the alluvial beds like sand or silt. Uh, under the barrage, there is sand or silt. Okay, and uh, the water also moves under the barrage. So the barrage should be safe uh, for these both considerations. That is the surface flow or overflow consideration and subsurface flow consideration. But this chapter only deals with the surface flow co considerations. Surface flow is also known as overflow Okay, consideration. Now we have to take care of uh, these things in case of surface flow uh, considerations. First of all, uh, estimation of the design flood. What should be the value of the flood on which the hydraulic structure or the barrage is to be designed? Number two, uh, how we can design or compute the length of the barrage. OK. The second day, we must understand the retrogression phenomena, which is a temporary phenomena. And but what it is, because this is very important in the design of the barrage uh, for surface flow, uh, considering such a surface flow. The next phenomena is accretion. And we must understand what is accretion in case of a barrage. And then the barrage profile. So we should we we should be able to design the barrage profile. Once we say the design of barrage profile, it means we must uh, be able to design the level of the upstream concrete flow. And then how much should be the length of the upstream concrete flow? The next is what should be the slope of the upstream glasses? Then we must design the level of the crest of the barrage. Then how the design of downstream uh, glasses? And then we must uh, be able to fix the uh, level of the downstream concrete floor and also the length of the concrete flow. So these are the uh, items uh, which we must uh, design uh, by considering surface flow considerations. OK, but now we will go to one by one. First of all, the design flood estimation, how we can uh, basically design flood of a hydraulic structure or barrage it depends on these three major factors. How much is the life of the structure? Means the life of the barrage. What is expected life of barrage? What it would be the capital investment or cost <coughs> it requires? And uh, what are its economic importance? OK, so based on these all factors, we uh, uh, take certain value of the design flood. Usually a design flood for the barrage is taken as it given in the book is 50 to 100 year return period. 
but you know uh, now more emphasis is given on the 100 year return period flood so nowadays a barrage must be designed by considering at least 100 years return period flood so how we can find 100 year return period flood yes somebody will would uh, describe it what is the procedure to compute 100 year return period flood we are by applying flood frequency analysis approach so by flood frequency analysis we can find 100 year return period flood or we can find any return period flood and you know for doing this for finding this design flood what what data do we require you know the maximum instantaneous discharges of each year so highest value of the flood of each year that we require and then we have to carry out the flood frequency analysis so you have already done flood frequency analysis in your uh, hydrology engineering hydrology subject okay so from there we can find that what is the value of 100 year return period flood on that flood we will design a barrage is it clear <coughs> Yes, sir. Now the second is the barrage length. Barrage length means width of the barrage, basically. The width of the waterway, how much we should take the barrage length. As I mentioned you earlier, that the width of the river is a function of discharge. Width of the river is a function of Function of discharge. This B, let's say B is the width of the river. We know that this is a function of Q. Hana? When the discharge would be more, the width of the river would be more. <coughs> Even on 100 year return period flood, the width would be too much. And the barrage waterway, we cannot provide up to that. Though we can provide uh, the marginal bonds up to that extent. Okay. But not the main barrage part, which are the weirs, which are the main base and the understuce base. Their width we keep shorter. Okay. And uh, for this purpose, we use Lacey's equation for wetted perimeter. So according to Lacey, wetted perimeter is 2.67 root of discharge. This is an English system and in system international, 4.75 root of discharge. So wetted perimeter of a channel is then is a function of what? Kiska function hai? Uh -huh. Discharge. Function of discharge. And uh, you know this equation of Lacey, it has been tested on many rivers and only many artificial channels. And uh, its performance remains good. So finally, how the length of the barrage we can compute using this equation, which says that length of the barrage L that is equal to LLC, Lacey's looseness coefficient, and this is the wetted perimeter, which is given by the Lacey, and this is 2.67 root of Q in English system, and it is 4.75 root of Q in SI. And this Lacey's looseness coefficient, its value ranges from 1.2 to 1.8. It means 
whatever is the wetted perimeter value, we further increase it either by 20% from 20 to 80%. This is further increase. This is the standard practice to compute the length of the barrage. OK. And here, you know, the wetted perimeter we are saying is very close to wetted perimeter. Is approximately equal to. Width of the river. Is it true, G? B. Yes, sir. Oh, very yes, much. sir. Because this is the river in case of. Uh, Alluvial plains have very, very large widths and depth is very small. So how you will compute wetted perimeter? Only this depth plus this depth plus this width. So this width is very large. So this is we can ignore the depths. So we can say that wetted perimeter is approximately equal to width of the channel or branch uh, or river. So this is uh, how we have to compute the length of barrage. Shall we move ahead? So length of barrage should be Lacey's looseness coefficient into wetted perimeter given by Lacey. Now retrogression. <laughs> what is retrogression? You know, retrogression is a temporary phenomenon. Temporary. What do you mean by temporary? To explain retrogression, we are here. What is this? This this is the main barrage portion. Which one is the upstream side? This is the upstream That's side. Fine. Yes, and this is the downstream side. So the flow of water is from is in this direction, and. Uh, This is the upstream concrete floor. This is the upstream glasses. This is the crest of the weir. This is the downstream glasses. And this is the downstream flow. OK. And. Uh, we want to study the. Retrogression. What is retrogression? You know, uh, if the gates are closed or even not closed, now this would be the sorry profile. How the uh, water will flow. This is the water level. In the upstream side. Due to the construction of this Weir, you know this whole weir. Now, what is, what has happened on the upstream side to the depth of flow? Is it same or uh, increased? So it will increase the on flow. the same value of the discharge. Okay, discharge yes, is same, but the depth of flow has increased. Once the depth is increased, what would happen to the velocity of flow here? Velocity ko kya hoga? Ho that should reduce. When the velocity will reduce due to that, the sediments here they will deposit on the upstream side. So here you will find many sediments. This is temporary phenomena. Once just after the construction of the barrage, it happens. And then the water which moves over the weir. How much sediments it has? It has less sediments. And when it passes here, this is the bed of the river. OK, this is the natural river bed. And uh, this water contains very less silt. And then we call this water as the silt thrusty water because it has more energy. And then what it does, it picks sails from the downstream river bed. Due to that, what happens? 
the downstream river bed goes down like this. And this phenomena is called as a retrogression. So what is retrogression? It is the lowering of downstream river bed due to flowing of relatively less silt water. And uh, so this much is the retrogression. This for the original bed, and this is called as retrogression. Retrogression. Okay. Now you go back here and uh, you will read from here. Uh, it's a temporary phenomenon. When it starts, which occurs after construction of VRR barrage in a river flowing through alluvial soil. Is it okay? As on upstream side, the depth of flow increases, the velocity of flow should decrease, resulting there would be deposition of sediments on upstream side. So therefore, the water overflowing the barrage has less silt, as we have seen earlier. Huh? picks up silt from the downstream bed. So this results in lowering the downstream river bed for few miles. This retrogression takes place for a few miles. This is known as retrogression. You know, it may occur for a few years, maybe for two, three, four, five years. And the bed levels often recover their previous level. Would you follow it? And you know, after certain times, the bed level may recover like that, or maybe 90% or 80% it recovers after certain years. Values of the retrogression may vary from 2 to 8.5 feet in Pakistan. So this retrogression, how much is this value, which is being observed in Pakistan, two feet to 8.5 feet. There is a lowering of the riverbed level from downstream side. Retrogress level is important, very important, while fixing the downstream level to ensure the formation of hydraulic jump at the toe of the downstream glasses. Actually, the formation of jump is a function of downstream water level. OK, if you see here, if the downstream riverbed is retrogressed, then the depth of flow here is reduced. And this hydraulic jump, which was forming here, it may form maybe, maybe here or even on the downstream floor. So when it will form downstream floor, it is unsafe. It 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 prolongs the turbulence here, and then downstream riverbed is further eroded, and which can further damage the barrage. <coughs> Therefore, its formation has to be checked for retrogress level, for normal level, and for accreted level. And uh, so we need, we, we always want to create hydraulic jump on the lower third of the glasses, okay? Downstream glasses. Why the hydraulic jump is being created? What is the main purpose? Sir, to dissipate the destructive energy of water. Okay. And uh, so retrogress levels are more critical in deciding downstream floor levels. Why more critical? Can anybody tell me? So this is the normal level, normal riverbed level. And this is the retrogressed riverbed level. Why retrogressed riverbed, riverbed level is more important uh, for designing of the barrage? Why? 
what we want we want that the hydraulic jam should form on the downstream glasses which is this one okay and we and you know suppose if we have checked it on normal level normal riverbed level let's say hydraulic jump was forming from here from this section but you know after a few years maybe two three years retrogression took place and the riverbed level has gone down now the depth of flow here reduces and this hydraulic jump instead of this location may form at this location when the hydraulic jump is start forming at this location, the turbulence will, there would be more turbulence which will uh, reach to this downstream riverbed and it further erodes. So that is not safe. So if uh, we assume that this much retrogression has occurred and on this retrogression, uh, or if over hydraulic jump is forming, here on the lower third of the downstream glasses, then you know after retrogression when there would be accretion and the riverbed level will uh, come to it, their original uh, position or close to regional position, then this hydraulic jump will further move up, which is safe. So it means retrogressed levels are the most critical for the design of the barrage. All right, Jay? So that is the retrogression. And uh, how much the retrogression is possible? From? 2 to 8. <coughs> 2 to 8 feet. 8.5 feet. Retrogression is possible. That, that took, takes place in uh, the early, <coughs> maybe 2 to 4 years of the construction of the barrage. Why we call it as a temporary phenomena? Why we call it as temporary phenomena? Retrogression? Sir, because after a few years, there is a reversal of this phenomena, which is called rapid depreciation. Yes, because after a few years, there may be accretion process starts, and then the riverbed levels, they may recover their original levels so it will compensate whatever happened yeah, yeah. now now we have to discuss the accretion what is accretion accretion is the reverse of the retrogression reverse of the retrogression and normally occurs after the retrogression cycle is completed so in retrogression cycle completion, maybe it may take three years, four years. Once it is completed, then the next cycle starts. That is accretion cycle. OK. So by the way, why, why it takes place? Previously, there was retrogression was taking place. And then after retrogression, why the accretion has started? Can somebody will let me know? Can explain this phenomena? Where is that over diagram? Here. Okay, suppose uh, the retrogression took place. Maybe after three years, uh, the cycle has completed, and now the riverbed has gone down, and this much is the amount of retrogression took place. What happened on the upstream side? There was a lot of sediments deposited on the uh, on the right side, maybe the earth's bed has uh, ro risen or has rised. Now, when the bed will rise, and this is our pond level, which is fixed, we cannot go beyond the pond level. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. And uh, now what happened to the depth of flow for the same discharge? What is the depth of flow? Due to two to two, two, two years sediment deposition, it is reduced. 
Once it is reduced, what will happen to the velocity of flow? That has to increase. Now, once the velocity of flow is increased, it will pick sediments from here, from the upstream side, and it will carry with it. When it will reach here, what about the depth of flow here? Is more. And what will happen here the, to the velocity of flow? That has to reduce. Then the sediment which is carries will be deposited here on the downstream river bed. And this process is called as accretion. Now, this the deposited sediments on the left side are on the upstream side of the weir. Those will be transported here and will be deposited here. And this process is accretion. Accretion means recovery of the retrogressed river bed level. That is accretion. And now I think you understood why accretion takes place. Why the accretion cycle starts. Sir? G by. Sir, yes, accretion, accretion phenomena pehle nahi ho sakta. Retrogression. Ajay. मुझे बताए क्योंकि सर उधर भी डेप्थीम रिवर चल रही थी पहले उसकी डेप्थ शायद इतनी हो है ना ऑन दैट डिस्चार्ज ऑन दिस वैल्यू ऑफ द डिस्चार्ज दिस वाज द डेप्थ ऑफ द रिवर यू मेड दिस स्ट्रक्चर इन द रिवर यू डिस्टर्ब द इट्स नॉर्मल फ्लो एंड व्हाट हैपेंड द डेप्थ ऑफ फ्लो ऑन द अपस्ट्रीम साइड वाज इंक्रीज्ड ड्यू टू दैट सेडिमेंटेशन इज मस्ट ऑन द अपस्ट्रीम साइड सो एज द देयर इज अ लेस सिल्ट वाटर आर द सिल्ट थ्रस्टी वाटर इज मूविंग ऑन द डाउनस्ट्रीम साइड इट हैज टू पिक the silt from downstream side so cannot the accretion cannot take place earlier okay sir theek hai okay so where we were accretion ha na so what is its significance its significance in the design is much less than as compared to the retrogression retrogression is very important accreted levels are normal levels they are not that much important okay if my if i have designed a barrage and if it is safe on retrogress levels it is automatically safe on the accreted levels are on the normal level because those are higher and the jump will move up so there it is safe because the higher downstream water level tend to push the hydraulic jump to the glasses making it more safe therefore the hydraulic jump formation calculations which are based on the retrogressed levels which are based on retrogressed levels will always be safe for accreted and normal levels okay so that is the significance of retrogression accretion has not that much significance but we wanted to understand this phenomena that after retrogression cycle when it is completed then accretion cycle starts but within that 3 4 years if we have not uh, designed our barrage considering that retrogression in these years our barrage may fail okay now this we have already discussed and uh, now comes the barrage profile the first thing the crest level how we have to fix the crest level uh, this one what how we have to find this level crest level of the barrage kyunki kaise malum karna hai what should be the approach be the approach to find this crest level kya honi chahiye yeah 
you know we we design uh, this barrage on a certain Sir, level of uh, power gg please yes please okay yes sir, our quest our, our quest level should be high enough to cater that no your voice is not clear anyway uh okay ji we want to fix this crest where we should fix this crest level of the crest how 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 much it should be above it yeah. do we know the pond level what is this level where do we fix the upstream level of the barrage this is called as pond level pl so this level is pond level by the way how do we fix pond level pond level kaise fix karna hai kyun bhi barrage ka pond level it should be where we have to see that on what is the highest flood level uh, what is the flood level on this designed flood okay let's say design flood pe ye ye level aata hai far design flood and then we have to see that how much the water will rise due to provision of this weir and due to damming action that rise of water level is called as on a pristine site what is what it is called kya bhai due to the weir provision the water well level will rise on a pristine site what it what it is called flux sir f flux flux f flux yes good so it means we know the depth of flow at the design flood and we know the f flux so if we will add them we can find the pond level okay so okay we can fix that this is the pond level or even we can go further up uh all right uh, if uh, to increase the command of the barrage so but the at least how much we should go up whatever is the its uh, stage in the in the on the design flood plus f flux we have to add and we can find the pond level now then if we know the pond level then how we can fix this crest of the weir of the barrage kaise fix karna hai bhai let's say this is small h what is small h yahan se yahan tak what is small h i think you have performed experiment on rectangular notch and v notch and you know what is small h small h is the head over the crest of the notch are here so this small h is the head over the crest of the weir okay and we know the design star q that we know please mute your mics we know the q design discharge so on design discharge can't we easily compute what should be what should be the value of the h which is the head over the crest of the weir <coughs> can we easily compute yes by which formula by discharge formula of the weir or discharge formula of the notch if it is notch this is not notch this is weir huh and uh, you know for notch what was the formula for actual discharge cd times for rectangular notch 2/3 root of 2g h raised to 3 by 2 where that h is this h aise hi hai bhai r h was the total head 
टोटल हेड ऐसे ही था ना भाई ये वाला हेड था एच कैपिटल एच सो इट मींस आई कैन फाइंड एच एंड इफ आई हैव द वैल्यू ऑफ स्मॉल एच देन हाउ आई कैन फिक्स द लेवल ऑफ द क्रेस्ट आई नो द पॉन्ड लेवल सो पॉन्ड लेवल माइनस एच would be the level of the crest of the wear so this is how you can fix the crest crest level so we we have to compute the velocity of approach how we can compute the velocity of approach q over y r r r is the discover depth so therefore velocity head would be v square over 2g this is approach velocity head and uh, this would fix the upstream energy line how much is the specific energy e1 on upstream side y1 plus v1 square over 2g okay and we know the equation of for discharge for free flow discharge is cl h raised to 3 by 2 where h is the total head which we have seen here so this total head small h is the just the depth of flow or head over the crest of weir without kinetic head and this is the equation for submerged weir <coughs> or submerged flow this charge is c dash l h raised to 3 by 2 and total head is h plus capital h is small h plus v square over 2g this is the approach velocity head and uh, h is the head over the crest of the weir this we we used to measure even in the experiment in lab the value of the c is the coefficient of for free flow is varies from 3.1 to 3.8 in english system and the c dash is the coefficient of discharge for some much flow and for that we have to use gibson's curve which is this form gibson's curve before going to gibson's curve you must know the difference between free flow and submerged flow what is the difference kya bhai koi farak hai free flow mein aur submerged flow to submerged flow pressurized hote hain no both they are open channel flow okay please recall that rectangular notch experiment koi aa raha hai zain mein that was a sharp edged rectangular notch and uh, they and you know when the water was passing over the notch to fir kya ho raha tha downstream pe a nappe was forming नेपे फॉर्म हो रहा था yes, sir. और वो वाटर क्या टच कर रहा था डाउन स्ट्रीम पे नहीं कर रहा था वट अबाउट हियर इन केस ऑफ एयर तो क्या ये फ्री फ्लो कर रहे इज इट फ्लोइंग फ्री आर टचिंग विद द डाउन स्ट्रीम क्लासेस so it is touching the downstream it is touching so means this type of the flow is submerged flow and that was the free flow and if it is submerged flow then the c dash coefficient of discharge for submerged flow we can find from gibson curve so this is the gibson's curve and the y the variable on y axis is h over e is the total energy and the small h is head over the crest of the weir and c dash over c if we know the c and this for this value we can go here and we can find the value of this ratio c dash over c we know the c so we can find c dash okay Uh, i am sorry these are not readable but in the book you can read it ha huh? so i have shortened it is it clear ji so c dash you can find and then you can, you will use this equation aapne ye wali equation use karni hai and which is for submerged weir and uh, from here 
Uh, then you have the value of, from this equation. What you will compute? You will compute this h. Because you know the discharge, you know the C dash, you know the L. So H you can compute. And uh, this, if you know this approach velocity, then you can compute small H. Excuse me, and sir. Once, yes. So I'm approach velocity ke liye scour depth ko kyun use kare? Significance kya uski? Scour depth ke. Yeah, this is this is very good question. Actually, this cover depth we are doing is here. Yes, we are doing it here. Yes, we are doing it here. Because velocity of approach is on that side. Actually, this is the depth of flow, so we should use this depth, right? Yes, sir. But you know, as we do not have any depth, so this cover depth will be discovered. So this is the value of R. Given by the Lacy. So instead of using this depth Q over Y, we say compute Q over R. So because this is the ये नीचे कौन सा material है? Alluvial. Alluvial है and the water is also flowing over that. This is the main reason and that's why we compute the uh, this uh, velocity of Approach velocity of flow as uh, Q over Y, Q over R. Okay. So we can easily find the H. Or H over E, this is called as modular ratio. Okay. Or ye wala kalata reduction factor. Okay. Anyway, so ye jo H hamne nikaliya. So if so how we can find the crest level pond level minus h and small h kaise nikalna hai capital h minus v square over 2g and then in this way we can fix the crest level of a weir is it easy now how we can find crest width to width kitni honi chahiye crest ki this one what should be the width the crest to yahan pe kaun si cheez ne seat karna hai the gate has to rest here. Hana? Gate aega na either. So, kitni on each aye width is ke? The crest width should be such that it can seat the gate. Normally, a width of 1.5 to 2.5 meter should be adequate. Thik ho gaya ji? Now, we would like to solve a numerical on the how to fix the crest level of the weir. So find the crest level Q max is given. High flood level is given. Length of the weir is given and the value of F given and the C dash is given. This is the coefficient of discharge for so much flow. And uh, <coughs> so here Compute first of all the small Q, which is capital Q over L. So it is 5 cubic meter per second per meter. Then compute its cover depth 1.35 Q square over F of power 1 over 3. And uh, this is we are using System International. So answer is in meters and 8.4 meter. Compute the velocity of approach. That is the Q over R. One more reason of using R uh, at the initial stage, we don't know the exact depth of flow. Huh? So that's why we use R as well. And uh, that is 0 0.59 meter per second. Compute then approach velocity head, V square over 2G. That is, let's say, coming 0 0.92 meter. Now using discharge formula over broad crested weir for submerged conditions. So Q is equal to C, C dash L H power 3 by 2 putting these values only the h is unknown and we have determined h which is 1.822 meter and we know that this total head is equal to the uh, head over the crest plus the velocity head and as we know the velocity head we, we, we have already computed 
So we can compute the age, which is the head over the crest of the rear. Now the crest uh, uh, the level, how that should be equal to the pond level minus age. So this was the pond level given 100 and this is 1.63. So the crest level is 98.37 meter. This is how we can solve this problem of fixing the crest level of a barrage, uh, rear of the barrage. Is that OK? Question, sir. Yes, sir. First of all, uh, we have to fix the crest level of this calculation. We have to make sure that the crest level of the crest level is critical flow or maybe sub-critical. Why do you approach the depth of flow? No, uh, you know, you have already checked that. You know the critical depth, the value of the critical depth for that design discharge that you have already computed. You know the value of the YC. Veer height you have selected in such a way that it is more than the hump height. It is causing damage action. It is more than the YC. Can I Yes, sir. Okay, so we have to do it. And the 100 year return period is a flux. So, what is flux? Why we have taken? Because if the VR height is as the critical harm height, then the flux is Yes, sir. That we have studied in hydraulic engineering subject very clearly. If we will provide a hump, so what change at the end the water surface profile? Only the, the locally water surface profile goes down. Bus. Yes, subcritical flow. Hai. So no damnation takes place. No efflux takes place on the upstream side. But when over hump height is greater than the critical hump height, then efflux or damming action takes place on upstream side. So I think uh, we should stop here because you might have the next lectures and inshallah we will uh, continue this chapter and it's very interesting chapter uh, relating with the, with the design of the barrage. Now I would like to take your attendance. It is taken and uh, okay ji if uh, i think thank you very much uh, for your presence and patience okay allah is thank you sir allah is allah is